Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Where is the best place to learn about Canadian finance? So in this video, I want to talk about two things. The first one is a follow-up on the real estate bubble video I made right here two weeks ago. I received a ton of comments since that video. Thank you so much for the discussion. And I saw some misconception inside that I wanted to address. And I also want to provide some updates since it's been two weeks since the video have launched. The second thing I want to talk about is a new world problem that's happening right now. This is something that's going to affect you, me, and everyone else in Canada. So make sure you stay tuned until the very end where I will talk about this issue in detail. All right, so let's first talk about the real estate bubble situation. So there are two major misconceptions I've been seeing in the comments or in the private messages or in other real estate groups that I see people bring up over and over again. The first misconception I see in people is the way of thinking how a real estate market is going to crash. A lot of people have been saying that COVID-19 or um, CRP ending or mortgage deferral ending is gonna equal to market crash. Um, that's actually not true. All those I just mentioned are more like components that could lead to a cascading effect that could result in a market crash in the future, but they're not a direct link to the market crash. And this is very important because it will let us have a more realistic expectation and anticipation of the future market. And we can see based on different data if we're heading towards a crash or not. Whereas if we just assume COVID-19 is gonna equal to a crash, then we might have the wrong expectation and make the wrong decision when it comes to real estates. So let's talk about if a market crash was to happen, how it would happen. So COVID-19 basically is going to create two different paths that have different effects. The first path is gonna affect the supply in the real estate market. So how it goes is more like because of COVID-19, we have a lot of un unemployment and then SERP is gonna end in September. Both of these combined is gonna lead to a lower rental market price and if the rental income drops, there are more desire for investors to offload these Canadian properties, and so the supply is gonna go up. The second path is gonna affect the demand. Because of COVID-19, people are either losing their jobs or they have a very unstable employment. This is gonna lower people's desire to hunt for houses and ask for a mortgage, and thus it's gonna lower the demand in the real estate market. Now, we need both the supply to increase and the demand to decrease, if both are met, then stage one of the real estate bubble bursting is complete. Stage two is where because of supply and demand, there is a price gap now, right? Expectation of what I get from selling my property versus what people are willing to pay, there's a clear gap. So because there's a price gap, it's going to lead to sellers holding out. Because even though you think it's worth less, it doesn't mean the sellers have to sell it at less. They could still sell at the price they want, it's just there will be almost no takers. $100 billion. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to have a waiting game of how long can the majority of sellers hold out before they decrease the price versus how long the majority of the buyers can hold out before they offer more to buy the properties. So I want to make sure we understand that. So when we observe the real estate market, we can be very clear and ask yourself, which stage are we in right now and how are things playing out? So like I said in the last video, the key we need to pay attention to is actually the rental market because no homeowner is going to sell the home they're living in if the price is lower than they expected unless they run into a situation where they're forced to sell. But that doesn't really happen too much. So if you really want inventory to go up and have a huge supply, then you really need to look at the rental market. So the second misconception I see a lot is people saying that, hey, my local market, my surrounding is very hot right now. So I guess there will be no market crash. Um, that's also not true. You have to remember that real estate tends to lag behind all other markets simply because they're so expensive and they're very illiquid. So buying and selling is really difficult. So for you to see real estate reacting to the current economy situation, you really have to wait anywhere from three to six months. So at the moment, it's still too early to tell what's going on with the real estate market. Now, the second thing you want to be careful of is why demand is so high right now. Number one, it could be just pent up demand from the before when people are locked down during quarantine. 
A lot of people probably have plans to buy real estate early in the year, but because of COVID-19 lockdown, they didn't have the chance to see and hunt for their houses. So right now, once we go into phase three, people are you know, rushing out to continue their home buyer plan. And that might be one of the reasons why we're seeing sudden huge demand in the market. Now, the second reason to consider why demand is so hot is what we call in the stock market, the equity melt up. This is what happens when everybody sees the possible rise in the price and they don't want to miss out. So every single person is rushing out there and fighting for all the remaining inventory because they're scared they would miss out. What that would do is it will compound the overheat of the market because the demand can't be sustained for a long time because the pent up demand from before, it's going to even out eventually. And then once people calm down, they're going to realize, hey, the thing I just bought is not worth as much as I just paid. I declare bankruptcy! Now, in the real estate, like I said, it's very illiquid, so it doesn't react as fast as the stock market, but we could be seeing a little bit of that in the market right now. So if you're gonna jump into a market right now, be very careful, and I'll say observe more before you really make the decision to go for a purchase. So let's look at some numbers and update on the situation. So I was doing some reading and there are a couple of things that we can look at to see the indicators so far. Uh, number one would be according to rental.ca, which shows the rents all over provinces. We can see that in some specific area, for example, in GTA, some areas do have an increase in rent. But overall, we can see that the average rent have been lower in every single provinces. Now, one interesting note in the report they were saying is that landlords could be offering incentives to tenants to help out their rent, which mask the real drop in the rental market. Now, another thing that we're seeing right now is that Airbnb have basically got slaughtered by the COVID-19. So a lot of them are actually conferring back to a long-term rental, which adds more to the supply in the rental market. Another thing that I want to point out is the number of immigrants that have been coming into Canada in the first quarter. So we can see that the number of population growth in the first quarter, according to TD report, have dropped significantly. It's only a 75K, which is worst since 2015. In addition, the PL emission have dropped 80% year on year in April. And why is that important? Well, that's because immigrants, when they come in, they're likely going to rent first and maybe buy in later. So they're actually a major source of customers for the rental market. And if there are less immigrants coming in, that means less rental demand and it will further push down the rental prices. Now, the last update I wanted to talk about is according to a website called University Affairs, who keep tracks of all the updates of Canadian universities, they posted an update saying that most universities in September will likely go with a hybrid learning system where most of the learning is going to be done online and the offline and the hands-on stuff is only going to be reserved for nurses or doctors or occupations that really need to do it face-to-face. -face. And this point corresponds to my last video talking about that students are likely going to go online courses, thus lowering the demand for rental units in Canada. So looking at all these updates and referring to the two paths that I mentioned COVID-19 could create for the housing market, we are seeing a lot of downward pressure being put on the rental market right now. Now, in terms of how much pressure this will put onto the rental market and whether this will lead to a huge sell-off uh, from the investors, remain to be seen. So I'll be following these updates closely. I'll be posting periodic update videos on the situation so everybody can be aware. So if you want to get all these updates, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so you get all my notifications in the future. All right, so next I want to talk about a big issue that's going on in the world right now, and it could be very serious for you, me, and everyone in Canada. Now, before I talk about that, I want to remind you that I have a private group on Facebook for like-minded people who want to get smarter with money. So if you haven't, make sure you click the link in the description below and request to join the group so you can get all the exclusive content in the future. All right, so this next problem is the extension of the COVID-19 problem and other factors contributing to it. And it's the global shortage of food. So let me tell you why this is happening and how it's gonna affect you in the future. So there are three major reasons why a global shortage of food is happening right now. 
Number one is climate change. You've probably seen reports a couple of weeks ago talking about the Arctic Circle have reached 38 degrees, where it was supposed to be very, very cold. This has led to many climate change around the world and affected harvesting and the production rate. The second issue is that major countries are being plagued by natural disasters. So in Africa, they're being plagued by locust swamp eating up everything. And in China, there has been severe flooding going on, which affected hundreds of thousands of people and destroyed many, many acres of farmland and production facilities. And the third reason is obviously COVID-19, which has affected production all over the world. So back in April, we've already seen reports coming out saying that countries are very concerned about their country's food production and shortage of food going on. And many countries like Russia have halted their food export to other countries as well. Now, at this moment, Brazil, which is responsible for about 25% of the food production in the world, has been going strong with the numbers. It seems like COVID-19 has not slowed them down yet. But as we get more and more cases, they've just hit 40,000 new cases per day. We really have to see if this is going to affect their production moving forward. Now, our own government have actually issued $252 million to help with the shortage of food production. But even still, the organizations have been saying that this amount is not enough to help all the farmers that have been affected by COVID-19. So what does it mean for everyone? Well, what we're going to see is probably a huge increase in the inflation and food costs moving forward. And actually looking at Stats Canada, we can see that the cost of a lot of essential ingredients like flour, potato, beef, and all that have steadily increased price for the last couple months. So going forward, if the food shortage is really going to be a huge issue, we might see a further increase in price and things are about to get very expensive for everyone. Now, given this year with a lot of things happening in the world, it looks like the cost of living is going up, 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 while our salary and future is becoming very uncertain. So I want to make sure I'm sharing as much financial information as possible to help everybody to get better with their finances. So if you have questions or topics you're really interested in, leave me a comment below so I can turn it into a future content to educate everybody. Now, if you like these kind of videos, I do upload them every Tuesday on this channel. So make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so you get all my videos in the future. All right, this is Jackie Ko. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.